My dear Adrian, I have need yet again of you and your skills. Today we celebrate the Feast of Vulcan, but the banquet which is held after the sacrifice seems doomed. Do you not know this feast? You obviously do not celebrate it in Gaul. Here, as in Rome, we dedicate this day to Vulcan and offer small fish to the altar fire, which must be completely devoured by the flames. What were you planning to do for the banquet? Well, that's the point. Nothing, nothing is turning out as I'd intended. I wanted a very special dish, and my cook refuses to make it on the false pretext that you cannot buy sylphium any longer. And I've still not found anything to entertain my guests. Some say that each fish represents the life of one of the inhabitants of the house and that we shall thus be preserved from fire. For me, such symbolical speculation is trivial. What is important is that we all celebrate friendship and our confidence in the justice of the gods. My cook, who is an artist, refuses to work unless he has all the ingredients he needs for his recipe. He's sulking in the kitchen and has not even lit the stove. We are heading straight for a culinary disaster. Silphium? What's so special about silphium? Ah, it's an exotic plant. Its sap contains laser, a very rare and very aromatic spice. Several decades ago, it used to be imported from Libya in tiny quantities, and then it completely disappeared, vanished into thin air. Nobody knows why. Oh, Adrian, try and find me some. What sort of entertainment did you want to offer your guests? I saw the tragedies during the Adeals games recently. The actors were quite good, and I greatly applauded the man who played the nanny. I think that the troupe has not yet left. Uh, they're giving recitals at house owners' homes in the area. If they are still in the city, uh, you could perhaps ask them. Hey you, business genius, come over here. Greetings, what is it? Does your wife hate you for giving her perfume? My sympathies. If only that were all. No, it's my mule, my stupid mule that will not work since you turned him into a walking advertising board. And the A-Dial now looks down on me after that whole incident. I will not let you leave until you find someone to buy this mule off me. If you don't buy my mule right now, I'm going to denounce you to the A-Dial. I know that you're the one who helped Fructus escape. Nothing's a secret around here. You're never safe from prying eyes. There are people everywhere even if you can't see them, and news travels through these streets at the speed of light. Blackmail, huh? I never give in to blackmail. It's a principle of mine. But I do like your mule. He doesn't deserve to be working in such a coarse situation. It's a deal. I'll buy him off you. Huh. That's fine, then. We have nothing more to discuss, and I have work to do. Greetings, dear Ascula. So, is business going well? Uh, let me introduce myself as the new owner of your long-eared associate. You really have been bewitched by that mule. Congratulations, anyway. How can I help you this morning? I'm looking for a very rare spice. It's called Silphium. Trying to find Silphium these days is Hercules' 13th labor. We haven't had any here for many a year. Go and see Locusta. She may have a little pot left for making up her medicines. You know the actors who played in the tragedy recently? Do you know where they are? It's a wandering troupe. 
They come, they go, they set up camp here and there, wherever they are wanted. If they have returned to Pompeii, they'll be training at the theater under the Aedile's watchful eye. They don't have anywhere else to do their daily gymnastics and voice training. Do you know where I could find Locusta this morning? Mm, not really. I saw her at dawn heading towards the Triangular Forum. There's something I don't understand. Why is the Aedile standing watch over the actors? The Aediles are in charge of public order, and actors are often followed by a band of male or female admirers who wait for them outside every theater. So what? Some great ladies are among them, and they are often the most excited, swooning and sobbing when their favorite begins trilling. The Aedile comes to instruct the most noble members of the band to go home without dishonoring their caste and toga. It's the law. Look, I can't give you any explanations, but take my advice. Leave the city this evening and stay away for a few days. Has hanging around with Fructus made a profit of you too? I cannot leave my shop just like that, but I'll think about it. Wonderful! I was beginning to think what a long day it was without seeing you. What new adventures have you got to tell me about? Today I'm looking for something rare. I'm looking for Silphium. Like Diogenes looked for a man, except I don't even have a lamp. Silphium? Oh, by Bacchus, you'd be better off looking for a three-headed griffin. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> he who hopes is happy. Tell me, you're a happy sword and a good advisor. What could I do at Popidius's feast this evening to entertain his guests? Well, when it comes to debauchery, I'm full of ideas, but I'm afraid none of them will be to Popidius's taste. He's such a respectable man. <laughs> Over there, at the end of the room, there's a lovely girl. She sings once she's drunk and dances half naked between the banquet tables. Dionysus. You really should leave town tonight, because tomorrow, a great disaster is upon us, I know, and the end is nigh. Oh dear, Fructus has converted you, I see. He came by just now and asked me to speak to the customers about it. <laughs> then he shot off again. Oh, poor thing. He's got Helvia snapping at his heels. Fructus? He should be lying low today. Where was he heading? No idea. Oh, don't worry. Old Fructus always gets away in the end. Hey, greetings, Pyran. So, have you got over our little adventure? I'm fine. The Eddie wanted me to speak. I denied everything. I have to keep out of the way for a little while until the next battle's in the amphitheatre. One or two victories and I'll be fine again. Nobody picks a quarrel with a hero of the arena who has been applauded by the people. Could you help me find some Sylphium? <laughs> Do I look like a Sylphium seller with yellow pallor and crooked legs? Popidius is holding a banquet this evening. Just as a favor, would you like to do a comic fight? Are you mad? I'm no actor. I perform in every theaters, not fashionable banquets. Look, I have to leave town tonight. There won't be any more games because tomorrow the city will die. Meet me at Popidius's this evening and leave with me. Leave? Oh, to run away from this fighting life. Never knowing if I'll walk out of the arena alive will be dragged down dead by my feet through the dust. Escape from my contracts and the terrible head of our barracks. I've collected quite a bit of prize money. I'll buy a herd of cattle, a mistress, and live quietly in the hills of my childhood. That's that! I'm coming with you! What about a little game to pass the time?
Locusta, what are you doing perched up there? I need that branch in the tree there, and I can't reach it. Locusta, I need you and your contacts in this town. Where can I find some silphium? Silphium is rare, my dear Adrian, and much harder to find in Pompeii than a beautiful girl by the name of Sophia. There is no more silphium or laser in this town except for a small pot which the priests of Isis keep closely guarded. I know that a priest of the temple used to buy selfium regularly, but certainly not for cooking. The temple was destroyed and rebuilt, but I think there is still some left, hidden in the Ecclesiastarian. Now I'm getting somewhere. I'm not initiated and I don't go to the temple. It will not be easy. You need to enter the Ecclesiastarian without the priest seeing you, and you will only have a few minutes to look for the Silphium. To help you, I will give you a papyrus, but only on one condition. Promise me that you will find a way to get my son and me out of the city this evening with enough to live on for a few days. Promise me with Venus and all the gods as your witnesses. May they have you die in the most terrible agony if you betray this promise. Go on. May Venus have Sophia and I die in the most terrible agony if I dare to betray my promise. Look, I'm very worried about Fructus. Where can I find him? Locus is looking over him. I sent him to Satyricus's at dawn. If it weren't for you, he would still be attached to his barrier, stupefied with Hellebore. But he cannot show himself today. And that is why he absolutely cannot find out that the wandering players are practicing in the theater. The priest knows me already. I'll have problems getting around him. Yes, he knows you. He is clever. But I know him too. It is a fragment of the Book of Hermes, the third, probably. It should be of interest to the great sacred secretary. On no account should you tell him how you got it. And do not mention my name. There, the actors who came to play Medea during the expiatory games held by the Aedile. Fructus fell into a trance when he saw them. You know, when he was a child, I sent him to acting school. He had a great gift for the stage, a beautiful voice, so powerful and deep. But he had to give it all up. I wanted him to be an actor and have all the glory, the gold, and the rich patrons. And so what happened? The teacher didn't keep him. He didn't have enough patience or concentration. Fructus could not stand the long breathing classes. It drove him mad. But he never gave up his dream to become an actor.
Well, if it isn't Secundus's friend, the young Gaul, who's been the subject centre of so much gossip about his fantastic adventures. Greetings, Adile. I am like you. I like watching these tragedy actors rehearsing. They have extraordinary voices. They can make such strange sounds, as if they came from another world, like the voices of the barbaric gods. What an artistic ghoul, a lover of song. But I know you. You cause trouble wherever you go, so you'd be well advised to go back to your host Popidius's house. I'm looking for Silphium, and in the Grand Theatre, really. And why not pluck a few roses from the crater of Vesuvius? You have become even more mad than Fructus. Go and take a cold dip at the baths. Popidius is the one who sent me here. I have to meet the actors because he wishes to hire them. Tell your men to let me through. These people are here under my protection. I had them come here and I forbid you to go and importune them. Papidius can wait. Please, rather than blocking my way, you should be warning the inhabitants of the coming danger. Off he goes again. Is obstinacy your only quality? May Jupiter strike me down with a thunderbolt if I let you into this theater. Listen, dear Adile, you misunderstand my intentions. I wanted to tell you that I have seen Fructus and... Fructus? Where? Over on the forum, but... Oh, this is unbelievable. I... Valley! Publius, oh, it's not you, Publius. Infamy, hopelessness. Alas, it is only Adrian, guest of Papidius and stranger in this town. Who is Publius? Alas, alas. Publius is one of my actors. At least he was. He disappeared after the play. Our widow, who owns a villa in Capri, took him away the same night. Oh, she wanted him to decorate her famous banquets overlooking the sea and sing for her the haunting tones of his soprano's voice. <laughs> Among the intoxicating smell of roses and jasmine. Yeah. Don't be so forlorn. There must be someone who can replace your Publius. Uh, replace! Replace my Publius with his siren's voice! <laughs> who could ever play like him? <laughs> who else could make a theater ring <laughs> with the heart? breaking verse of a beleaguered nanny. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Oh, despair. <laughs> I've come to make you a proposition on behalf of my host, Popidius, to come and play for his guest this evening. He would be... What? What? This evening? <laughs> I do not even know how I am going to get my own troop back together. <laughs> and how? How could I play the part of Medea? Medea! Without a nanny? Oh no. This is too much. I am doomed. Look, don't worry. I may know someone. Wait here. Oh, where else can I go unless... Unless 
only just to throw myself, yes, throw myself from the city walls. Don't stay still today. Oh, you're making me thirsty. Greetings. I greetings, greetings, yes, yes. Excuse me, I'm extremely busy. What with the Vulcanalia and the minstrel stale bread, I've got much work to do. The people are going to come in great number to buy fresh bread for the feast, and all my assistants are busy working in the kitchens of the large houses of the city. You have an admirable trade, Satyricus. You give them bread, the actors give them plays, you give bread to the actors. What else can people want? How sweet life is in Pompeii. Well, the actors will have to wait, I'm afraid. I don't have anyone to deliver, and I can't leave the shop. I'm looking for Silphium. Uh, in a bakery? That's a new one. I'm looking for some ideas to entertain Popidius's guests. Well, then take Fructus. <laughs> Often imitated, but never bettered. <laughs> when it comes to being a nutcase. Locusta told me I would find Fructus here. Uh, yeah, yes, in a way. Uh, but I warn you, he's extremely upset. He's hiding over there and refuses to come out or even say a word. Why do the actors want stale bread? Oh, for their bizarre diet, for their voices. No meat, some leeks, garlic, and occasionally a bit of stale bread soaked in wine. Really. Can you not see that I am not speaking? Fructus, I was just speaking with the minstrels now, and they are looking for another player. Oh, the minstrels! The players of tragedies! Me! You think they would want me? Oh, oh it's what I have always dreamed of. Oh, to play... Uh, Medea! <laughs> Listen how well I speak the verse. <laughs> if only on Mount Pelion the pine trees had not fallen under the axe. If of this wood the ship had not been built. Yeah, that's great. And if everything goes well, you could even make your stage debut this evening at Popidius' house. Do you know where I could find some... <laughs> What's wrong with me? Go and find Locusta. I've arranged everything. Wait for me at the Triangular Forum near the theater, but keep out of sight. To not raise any suspicions, you'll pretend to be a delivery boy for Satyricus. That? But... Uh, oh, 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 I, I, I cannot go out like that. Helvius is hunting me everywhere, everywhere. Oh, no, 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 no. I shall not go outside without a, a, a disguise. There we are. You look wonderful, passionate, and authentic as well. Satyricus, Fructus will deliver for you. Oh, Fructus, you're my saviour. <laughs> I shall be eternally grateful. 
Make sure no one sees you, and don't speak to anyone. I'll come and find you shortly. Follow me. Cheer up, Pilade. Lift your head and be happy. I've found a double cure for your ills. Really? Uh, what's that? Fructus here is a great actor who's been hiding his gift from the world. His mother, Locusta, is his personal physician. She makes potions which preserve and improve his voice, cure his cramps, and ease his stiff neck caused by heavy masks, and helps him recover from colic and hangovers. If you want, she can also cure your troop. Finally, as a go-between, she can improve your lot with a few added extras. There are some handsome young minstrels among you. Uh. Very well. Come here, fool, and show me what you can do. <gasps> well, are you ready to start immediately <laughs> and leave town this afternoon? Nothing, Nothing is keeping, keeping us here. here. So. Are you prepared to come and play for Papidius this evening? Oh, I was intending to leave town this afternoon, but since you have saved me, oh yes you have, saved me from ruin, of course I shall come. In any case, it would give me great pleasure to speak to Papidius, oh yes. If one of them wins the next elections, I want to be very well placed to get the public games. We shall leave. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. <laughs> well, I would like to leave town this evening myself. We should go after Senna. By this time tomorrow, we have to be as far away from here as possible. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We can't possibly leave at night. Think about it for a moment. No, 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 no. I do not like that. Not at all. Let us wait until tomorrow morning. Even so, my cart is nearly full. Mm. You shall have to find some other mode of transport. Whatever happens, we absolutely must leave before dawn. Locusta will explain. Very well. It is your decision. <laughs> Don't worry. I've got a steed. Albeit a little raggedy, but surprising all the same. Well then. Well then. We shall all meet at Stavy's Gate. Perfect. I have to leave now. We'll work out the details at Papidius's house. And so you return to our sanctuary, Adrian. What can I do for you? I'm looking for some Silphium. I doubt you will find any here, unless you know how to travel back in time. Papidius is looking for some entertainment for his guests. And you are looking for inspiration?
I want to give this to the great sacred secretary. It's only a theory, of course, but I think it's a fragment of the Hermes book. Hermes book? Which one? The first one, I think. That's completely unbelievable. I believe it's from the third book. The third, you say? Hmm. Please wait here for a few moments. I shall show this papyrus to the great sacred secretary. Look, my dear Popidius, the Silphium you so desired. Jupiter helps those who help themselves. Dearest Adrian, oh, I shall be eternally grateful to you, son. You know how to love your friends and to help them when they're in need. Oh, my Silphium, <laughs> the duck with rape of my childhood. The minstrels have agreed to come and light up your banquet with their recitals. Wonderful! Extremely! Extraordinary! Oh, thanks to you, my banquet will be unforgettable. I shall be the new Lucullus, the Prince of Elegance in our fair city. Now, Papidius, listen to me. You trust me. I'm your friend and the friend of Secundus. So believe what I have to say. You must leave, as the sun will not rise on Pompeii ever again. A dark and deadly cloud is going to smother the city. A shower of burning cinders will come. A river which will swallow everything in its path. Don't ask me how I know, I just do, and that's all. You must go. Perhaps, or perhaps not. Even if you were a Celtic soothsayer, even if you were telling the truth, I could not just save myself. I am a notable, and I cannot abandon my fellow citizens if they are in danger without ruining my family's reputation. Campagna is our land. We were born here. And if she is going to die, we will die with her. Only if a god appeared, as Venus appeared to Aeneas during the fire of Troy, and told me to leave, would I do so. Adrian, are you a god? No, but we still have a few hours until the end of the world, if you're to be believed. Let us enjoy them, and seize the day before it fades away and dies. Come with me to my kitchen. I want to see my recipe being made. Ha! I thought Papidius was going to make mincemeat out of me and serve me in a pie if I didn't find his damned sylphium. Anyway, look, everything's ready. I can rest easy now. Would you like to guess what's on the menu? My first has kept its shell. My second has no more, but has found a companion. My third never had one, except for the infinite sea. You should not mix up what my fourth one is doing, but my fifth crowns your achievement.
Behind its hostile appearance, my sixth can hide a treasure. And my seventh is not deceitful. My eighth is good inside and out. Adrian, now is the moment to offer to Vulcan the victims he demands. If you would, go and get five fish, as red as blood and as lively as the swell. Father Vulcan, by offering you these fish, I pray with all my heart for you to be favorable to me, to my children, to my house, and to my slaves. Stacius? Yes, it's Stacius. You took your time to realize. How dare you? What have you done with Sophia? Sophia is in a safe place. I have not harmed her. <laughs> I have simply made sure there is no way she can reach you. What gives you the right to prevent us from leaving? It is the wish of my master, Octavius. He decided the marriage between Sophia and our intendant, Habinus, and it is my duty to ensure that wish is respected. Habinus himself tasked me with looking after Sophia. <laughs> with you around, he was right to be wary. You stupid slave! You're only good for guarding the door like a dog! I order you to tell me where Sophia is! If you don't, she'll die, and it'll be because of you, and you shall be punished, sent to turn the millstone forever. <laughs> Kill me! <laughs> Kill me. I won't tell you, and you shall be hounded for destruction of another's property. I may only be a slave, but my secret makes me much more powerful than you. <laughs>
Adrian, oh, thank the gods. You should wear this. Nobody will recognize you dressed like that. Sophia, apple of my eye. Here is your mount. Hey, you there. I know you. We met yesterday. Your Puppetus's guest. The one who protected Fructus and started off all his madness. Helvius has forbidden you to leave the city. You're crazy. Take two hellebore seeds. Where is this bumpkin from? He doesn't recognize Paris, diva of the Campania stage? My fame has spread as far as Rome, and the emperor himself has requested my presence for the next games at the theater of Pompeii. And you want to prevent me from obeying our lord? That is a crime of less tragedy. You? A player? Prove it. Your troop just left town. Another illiterate Samurai, straight from the mountains. Here's your proof. I'm in a good mood today, so I won't hold it against you. To your good health. Thank you, minstrel. I couldn't refuse a little sip. <laughs> there they are! <laughs> there they are! Is this Pompey's last day? The city will disappear. Its destiny will be fulfilled, but its memory will survive. And after 50 generations, men will come and speak of us again. <laughs>